and welcome to the new video from City Ink Express. Today we're going to be taking a look at printing onto edible icing sheets and edible wafer paper using our templates in Microsoft PowerPoint. Now, the reason that we've chosen PowerPoint over some of the other programs available is partially because it is a very powerful program and is more than capable of doing everything that you'd normally need it to. And also that most of our customers are going to be familiar with Microsoft Office whether that's through using Word, Excel, Outlook or PowerPoint and so it won't involve learning a whole new user interface it should be fairly intuitive to work out most of the things you need having said that we'll go through this video today just to take a look at some of the different things that we can do in PowerPoint and if you're not familiar with those then maybe you'll learn something that you can apply to your own cakes and your designs as well so we'll go ahead and open up our standard templates. So we've got a few different templates here. We've got some small cupcakes here, which are two inch designs, and then some larger three inch, more of the American style muffin size, and a five inch round, a seven inch round, and then some other shapes as well. We've got some two inch wide hearts to go on top of cupcakes, and some three inch stars as well. So to start with, we will look at putting some curved text into the shapes here. So we might want it to say happy birthday along the bottom or seven today along the top, any of those things. And so to insert the text, we will click on the circle and then we'll right click and go to edit text. Uh, we'll type in something clever and inspired, like curved text. And so what we want to do with this, we'll change the font to make it a little more attractive. And we will center the text as well, just by clicking center up here. Now, in order to make this text curved, we've got this format tab at the top under drawing tools. So we'll click on that. And then over here, we have a text effects button. So if we click the drop down menu, we can add shadows, reflections, and various other effects here. I'll just add a slight shadow to give it a bit of depth there. But what we want to do today is go into transform and we have it curved at the top or curved at the bottom. We'll do the bottom today. Now once we've done that, we can see this little yellow node here which we can click and drag to make the curve smaller or larger. And we'll just go somewhere in the middle today, maybe a little bigger than that. So that is how you add curved text to a circle. And so the next thing that we want to do, we might want to add a picture. It's not really much use having an edible printer if you're not going to print images onto it. So in order to do this, we will right click again, and we'll select format shape. And what that will do is bring up the shape format bar on the right. There we go. And there's various different options in here for the shape but we'll be looking at the fill options for the time being. So we'll just click on fill to open up this menu here and we want to use a picture or texture fill. And you can see it's filled in a texture automatically there but we will want to use a different picture. So we'll go insert picture from file and click on that and we'll find our image. We'll use this picture of Rosie the dog today and that's all sorted there so we can use either a cookie cutter or scissors once this is printed to cut that image out and stick it on top of our cupcakes. Now if we want to do several of the same picture what we can do is just select picture or texture fill again on this next circle and it uses the same picture with the same formatting as before. So if we do want to do different images on the same sheet that is something you can do in PowerPoint some of the specific cake printing software will only let you do the same image across a whole sheet. So if you wanted to do four of one image and four of another, it wouldn't let you do that on other software, but we can in PowerPoint. So we'll do that now. We'll go picture or texture fill, and then we'll just choose a different picture from file, which is this unicorn. And again, if we want several of that, and we can just click across and picture or texture fill we'll fill them all in the same and obviously we could have the text on top of these images as well 
so that's not a problem there and we can have different text in every cake if we wanted to so the next thing that we want to do is we'll take a look at creating our own templates obviously we've only got a few different options here but you can choose any shape any size that you want so in order to add a new slide to this we will right click and select new slide again it's all fairly straightforward and intuitive this it's nothing too complicated here and so to insert the shapes that we want we go to the insert menu and under shapes we'll find a circle so we'll just add a circle on there now you see these are automatically filled with a green line and a green fill we don't really want that so again in the format shape bar for the time being we'll just go no fill and under line we'll change the line to black now in order to get your images the perfect size the easiest way that I find is under this format bar we can change the height and the width now you can enter these in any uh, format you want so you could type them in in inches in millimeters to do it in inches say we wanted a three inch circle type in three inch and it automatically changes that to 7.62 centimeters which is the same today we'll be doing a 45 mil circle for some fairy cakes so we just type 45 mil and change it to four and a half centimeters now in order to have several of the same image on here we could either oops we could either right click and select copy and then paste the image and move it to bed that's one way of doing things or we could also just hold down the control button on our keyboard and then drag the image and it automatically creates a new image that's exactly the same now, you may have noticed that I had some dotted lines appear then and those will just help you with lining things up so you see those lines at the top and bottom mean that it's in line with the rest of the images and those lines there mean that we've got equal spacing all the way across so if we want to add a couple more rows then again we can hold control down and select multiple shapes and again we just keep holding control and drag down to there and once more to there so we've got 12 evenly spaced fairy cakes on here we could probably fit some more on if we tried but I'm not going to try too hard today now we will also look at inserting uh, shapes that maybe don't fit very well pictures that don't fit very well inside our shapes sorry so on these ones from earlier we did get fairly lucky in that both of those images I'll show you the images in fact the images are fairly square and the subject is centered inside it as well so when we just clicked picture fill it filled it in quite nicely there now if we want to use an image which is maybe not as square like a standard photo shape then we could have this Paw Patrol picture as an example so I'll show you what happens if we try and fill with this in our fairy cakes so we come across picture or texture fill again from file I'm going to choose the Paw Patrol picture now you see that this has been somewhat stretched to fill the shape properly but we don't really want that it looks a little bit odd so we'll zoom back out so up here we've now got two format bars we've got one for drawing tools which is for the whole shape and the text and the fill and whatnot and one for picture tools which is just for the picture inside so in the picture format bar over here we have this crop button now if we click fit then it has the correct aspect ratio so it is the correct shape the image and then we can resize it and move it about so with this picture if we wanted to have a cake that just features sky here that's sky the character not sky the blue stuff then we can have that and again once we click off this that's just a picture of her in there maybe in the next one again we picture or texture fill to get the same thing and then we can come up to the picture format bar and go to the crop menu and then we could maybe have uh, here we go we'll have Marshall in this one 
go lined up quite nicely there. And again in the third maybe we want to have Chase in this one, everybody's favourite character. Here he is, the police dog. Didn't quite fit his backpack in there, so we'll just resize the image slightly. There we go. Perfect. And then maybe in the last one, we'll. Oops. Again, choose picture or texture fill. Come across to crop. And we'll stick rubble in the middle of this cake here. There we go, so we've got four cakes that each match quite nicely. So we could do all 12 with different characters in if we wanted for a nice selection of cupcakes for a kid's party or something like that, which is quite nice. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is the lines. Obviously on all of our templates we've got these black outlines. You can remove those very easily or you can change the colour, change the thickness and we'll talk about how to do that now. So if we wanted to remove a line, we'll remove the line from Chase here. Again under the format bar we'll just click on fill to minimise that and we'll bring up the line option. So we can just click no line there and then when we cut the picture out it'll just be that um, image without the black outline. And the reason that we have kept a black outline on all of our images is that if we choose no line on an image that has no fill then you can't see it anymore and it becomes very difficult to select. So you can still select it but we'll just add that line back in. Now another feature that I like using in PowerPoint is that you can use the eyedropper to choose the colour of the line to match something inside the image. So on this maybe we want to choose the yellow to match Rubble's hat for the outline. So again in the format bar, in the format uh, menu on the right, sorry, where we have the colour option for the line, there's an eyedropper there. And what this lets us do is select a colour from inside the image, which is that nice yellow there and it just fills in the line on the outside the same colour. So if we wanted to do that for Marshall here, select that circle, go to the line menu, choose the eyedropper, and we'll take the red from his hat for the outline there. And again, once more for Sky, maybe we want the pink from her jacket, so we choose the eyedropper, or the pink from her collar maybe, that'd be quite nice. Yeah, there we go. Sort of lilac colour there. Oops. And then we've got changing the outline, either getting rid of it or changing the colour of it to match the image itself, which can just give a really nice effect on those. So the next thing that we're going to do, I'm getting through quite a lot today, is we'll look at, obviously there are lots of different shapes available. Most of what you'll be doing with your cakes is going to be circles and squares or rectangles but you can choose pretty much any shape within this. There's probably far more than you'll ever need. So we'll just have a quick look at the number of shapes here. So if you did want to use a dodecagon shaped cake then you can add that in and again we can just change the fill and change the line on it to suit our needs. There we go, get rid of the line and that's that. So if anyone wants an oddly shaped one, and again you can use the hearts and things that we've had before, just like that. So we'll get rid of this one and we'll look at doing something maybe a little more involved, maybe someone wants a full cake print for a rectangular cake. So we'll go insert shapes, choose a rectangle, add it, this one's going to be 5 inches high, so I'll type in 5 inch and 7 inches wide. There we go. Now we'll just move this to the centre of the page. Again you'll see those guidelines pop up so that we can centre that very nicely so it's right in the middle of our page there. We'll get rid of the fill and we'll just have a black outline on this for the time being. So we can insert text into this. We'll just have a, a birthday message in here, why not? 
we'll say happy. It's come up with white text automatically. So text fill black. We'll type in happy birthday Emily. Why not? And on the home tab again we can change the font and change the size. And the same as before, if we come into the format tab, we can add a reflection onto that if we'd like. Now in order to get this text on the bottom of the picture, it's over in the format shape bar again, and under text options. And over here where it says text box, vertical alignment is in the middle. And we may just want that on the bottom there. So we've now got this nice reflected text there. So within our cake we could add uh, a picture fill. We'll choose a picture of some children here, one maybe not that big. Insert picture from file and we'll choose that. Now again it's gone rather large and a bit funny looking. So under picture tools, format, crop. We'll make it fit. Maybe we want it a little smaller than that maybe that size. And again we can center it in the image just like that. And then if we want some more pictures around the outside here we could insert a circle again. Keep coming back to the circles. And then we'll get rid of the line on the outside and we'll stick a picture in. We'll take Rosie and we'll just make sure that she fills that area by moving her around until she's right within that circle there. And again, if we wanted several of Rosie there, we can hold control and drag down and get them evenly spaced, and then the same on the other side, all at the same height all at the same distance from the edges and that might be one way of doing a large picture for a full print onto a cake and yeah so that's just taking you through some of the different options that are available in PowerPoint either for using the templates that are already available or for creating your own new templates for the different sizes of cake that your customers might want or that you might want to create. So. Yeah, if you've got any questions about various options available in PowerPoint, then feel free to get in touch with us, and I'm sure we'll be more than happy to help you out there. Thank you very much.